Okay, hi everyone. Good evening. Hi, hello, sir. Good evening. Okay, so yeah, how was it? How was the week three? Have you all gone through it? So week three is fine. I think like uh, mm -hmm. I just had a small set of doubts. So. Okay. Uh, is it in the lecture portion or in the assignments? No, uh, in the assignment, uh, like in general, like uh, okay. in general, like even in the lecture, there's something that is discussed. And while doing the assignments, I was getting similar. So wanted to ask if I if we are on the right track or not. Okay. Uh, what about others? Okay, so I please read them. But some question on the assignment side. Uh, okay, okay. So let's start with the content covered in week three initially, or even week one, two, three. Any doubt in the content part, anyone? Before we move to assignment questions, sir. I mean, it's like uh, mm -hmm. my my question is kind of intertwined both ways. So should I ask it right now or later? Yeah, sure. Just ask it. So, so in week three, like I, uh, ma'am takes that example of a square and a circle, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, sampling for, for a circle from a square, if I'm putting it correctly. So, um, then she uh, calculates the value of four by five, pi, sorry. And uh, then she also does an average of the number of trials it took for the uh, this thing to complete, right? Mm -hmm. So, the value uh, average number is slightly more than the upper bound of 4 by 5 pi, right? And it was something similar that I was observing in the graded assignment as well. Uh, as in like maybe in the second decimal or third decimal, uh, the value was more than what uh, the numerical theoretical value would be. So is that an acceptable way of doing things or is, is, is something missing out there? Okay. Okay, so just to be clear, you you are saying that the values are differing from the second or third decimal onwards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine, right? If you decrease your sample size, right, it the difference will increase more. It might increase more. And if you increase the sample size way too much, you will get the exact theoretical value after that high number of trials. So you might have studied Monte Carlo, right? I mean, yeah. we didn't study, but I know it. So yeah, I mean, I understand that reasoning, but I also felt that uh, looking at things in a different way. So uh, if you look at what ma'am was doing, so she was saying that uh, we don't need to sample exclusively from uh, uniform because whatever point lies within the circle, which is the mm -hmm. domain that would obviously be satisfying the constraints of the square. Yeah. Or if it lies outside, then it, uh, it will automatically be zero. But even in the other condition where uh, it's possible that the uniform that we draw is u is equal to zero and i mean in a very rare case and but also at the same time uh, the value of the pmf i mean f the ratio basically is also zero but those cases will not appear if we don't sample from uniform right we will only be choosing points where it is uh, one so we might be missing, uh, we might be overestimating our number of trials a bit. And that, that may be one of the reasons why this thing differs on the second or third decimal. Does that sound reasonable? Oh, um, let me just share this. So it's in B3, I think, accept reject, right? Yeah, week three, sir. So algorithm is this, right? A separate jet from uniform distribution on a circle. Yeah, she, she writes a statement before the start of the algorithm that... Uh, this so one. if you... Yeah, before the node. So for any x, y drawn from within the square, 
the ratio will either be one or zero. But if we uh, okay, yeah, continue. So, but but in our usual uh, use case, when we do u is less than equal to f of x by c g of x, right? So mm -hmm. now if I draw u as zero somehow somewhere randomly. Okay. And if the ratio was also zero, then I'd accept that trial, right? Because u is less than equal to zero in that case. But in this setting, because we are not drawing from the uniform, uh, there would there could be some cases where uh, we are overestimating the number of trials because we are not drawing. So we are always assuming that it is within that region. So we are always looking for one, but there may be a chance where u was zero. So uh, that is my question. Looking for one, but okay. Uh, no, no. Okay, but I think what you are saying is, uh, let me draw it over here. Let me see. Give you a minute. Also, a bit unclear about like why we are just taking. Uh, points inside the circle not on the circle like x square plus y square uh, is equal to one or something like that i mean in the algorithm we are taking it but uh, while ma'am discusses the idea she is mm -hmm. explicitly not taking uh, this thing okay yeah so what you okay. so what you are saying is uh, let's suppose we have drawn we have drawn from our target uh, proposal distribution initially, right? Uh, I, I didn't get you, sir. Like, uh, okay. So, which which draws you are referring to? We will get zero. We will get one. So, uh, if you look at this statement, so for any x comma y yeah, drawn but... from within the square, so uh, yeah. during while she was explaining the statement, uh, mm -hmm. she was uh, in the video. She said that if we look at the indicator, this thing. So either it will be one or mm -hmm. either it will be zero. So for all points, x square plus y square less than one, right. uh, it will be basically one. Otherwise, if for all points outside it, it will be zero. Right. 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 So uh, now uniform, uh, if we draw, so so that therefore she said that we don't need to draw from uniform. Mm -hmm. So we can simply uh, draw from the box only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if we look back at the normal except reject, so it is like fx by cgx, right? So we right. draw everything from uh, gx mm -hmm. and then we calculate the ratio and then if it this thing. Right. Okay. So see, even if you do the normal, right? Suppose you have drawn from the uniform, let's say, um, I must take an example, minus one to one, right? Let's say you have drawn your sample as, let's say x equals zero. What would be your fx and gx in that case? x equal to zero, fx would be uh, one by four. One by four, right? Yeah. Right. And GX would also be one by four, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. No, GX, one? GX is our square, yeah. right? So GX, GX would be square. one by four. FX would be, yeah. uh, one by pi, right? So can you explain this more briefly? Because I missed uh, uh, week one and week two, sir, live lecture. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we will do that. And C, we has already computed, it was coming out to be pi over 4, right? Of 4 over pi. Okay. Right? So anyway, if you are, uh, if you're drawing from this circle, right? Let me just, if you're drawing from this, like this square is completely covering the borders of it. Right? And suppose I have drawn a point from this region, right? Suppose I have drawn this 0, comma 0, right? So this point would be like for this, my this 
ratio will always be one, right? Because whatever I do, my fx would be this, gx would be this, and my c would remain the same always, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now suppose I have drawn the point uh, over here. In that case, also my gx would remain the same, right? My yes. c will remain the same, but my f will become zero. Yeah. Yeah. So I cannot get any other value than zero or one. Yeah. But uh, so, okay. So, so why are we ignoring the drawing from u uh, uniform zero to one in this case? Like, I understand we can only get zero or one, but how okay. does that translate to not drawing from uniform at all? So, but not drawing from uniform. Your proposal distribution or what? No, no. I mean the statement, right? Thus, we no need to draw from a uh, un uniform at all. So, ma'am has written this statement, right? So, how does uh, this conclusion uh, connect with uh, this statement? Okay, okay. So, what ma'am is saying is, uh, one day you can do this, right? You can definitely do this. Draw from uniform and do it. But you can also avoid to do this. Ma'am said there is no need. So, you can do it like that. But another way to think of this, your point will be only accepted if it is lying in the circle, right? Yeah. Yeah. That... No, my point would be so that is my query. So if I look at it normally, so mm -hmm. u should be less than equal to f fx by cgx, right? Now, yeah. In the green point that you've drawn over there, this ratio turns out to be zero, right? But what if u itself that we drew from the random uniform distribution was zero in itself? Then that would be accepted, right? In that case, if this green point came up, mm -hmm. then that would be accepted, right? If you're drawing zero from the uniform distribution, you are saying, right? Yes, yes. It's but specifically in that case, your fx will remain the same, no? No, fx fx would be zero in the green point, right? For the green but okay one outside the circle right this one yeah yeah yes. yeah mm -hmm. so that ratio will become zero but if u itself was also zero then i will still draw it right as per accept reject this in ratio will become zero and it would be less than or equal to c you are saying right not c uh we are drawing like u, right? we are drawing from uniform yeah yeah and yeah, if u itself that we uh, drew using r unif was zero and this ratio was also zero, so then it would satisfy zero is less than equal to zero, right? And then that would mean we take that point. Okay, okay, I got, okay, I got you. How will, how will u be zero? The green point is inside the square, so it can't be zero, right? No, u, u is a random uniform, right? That we are drawing using any function, r u n f or something. Yes. And yes. and your f x would be zero because uh, that is outside the circle, but your g x is uh, non-zero, so the ratio Correct. will become zero. And if that u that we are drawing somehow somewhere with very low probability becomes zero at a particular instance of time, the and if this was a green point that was proposed, then this would be accepted, right? Uh, okay, okay. I, I, it's a continuous distribution, so I think any specific point will have zero probability. It's uh, more like uh, I, I'm not sure I'm following this, but uh, the probability of drawing any particular thing is always zero. It's like in the neighborhood, it will be it's it's a density function, not a distribution or a mass function, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, the probability yeah, right. can never but, be actually uh, fully zero outside inside the support. Yeah, but I mean, again, like uh, my query started off with the idea of getting some uh, decimals more than the uh, the C value that we get, right? So I what I was really trying to theorize was that because in the accept reject, we are somehow trying to discretize the process. Like we are not, I mean, of course, uh, theoretically, every point is zero, but we are picking one point, calculating the ratio and also drawing a random uniform and then comparing it. So that would in some sense be discretization. And I mean, in some sense, maybe loosely speaking. So 
that may lead to a, a wrong estimation of the number of trials because clearly as we can see like in one case uh, there is this green point which would have been accepted and uh, the number of trials would have reduced in that case or albeit uh, it would have been a bad point but the number of trials would have reduced um, but of course that might have ended up satisfying the criteria that c is an upper bound even if we look at four or five places of decimal or something like that so that is just what i'm trying to uh, arrive at Am I audible? Hello. Uh, yes, yes, sir, yes sir, we can audible. hear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you are saying that when you draw from uniform zero one, and this your this ratio becomes zero, right? Yeah. In that, in that case, also there might be some that might get accepted, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that probability would be very less, right? For that, it would be very. Yeah. 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 Definitely zero. very less. Yeah, very yeah. very less yeah. mm -hmm. but but even like if i look at the mm -hmm. number of trials so it's just varying at the second or third decimal so that is why i was trying to hypothesize whether this could be a contributing factor to that or not which is my main question like okay uh have you tried out one thing in r you try to generate samples from zero one and seeing how many times zero occurs when you have drawn thousand samples something like that you have checked I haven't tried doing that, but what up? I mean, I'm sure it will be almost zero times. Yeah, I, I don't think it will generate. Let me see. Uh, okay, if if it if this is not a contributing factor, so uh, so are you saying that uh, because if you just scroll down, then later on, ma'am uh, calculates the value of four by pi and also the mean number of trials. So that also differs a bit in the decimal. So uh, the num mean number of trials is more than the value of four by pi, which we said is the uh, theoretical upper bound. So that is just because of the randomness of the uh, drawing. Is that the only reason out here, or I'm, I just want to confirm this? Like, yeah. So I uh, okay. So in this, what I was doing now, I tried to generate samples using R unif, some ten thousand sample, and it's not generating zero. It's not generating zero or one. But that is always true. I think like the the more sample size you have, the closer it will get. The number of trials will get to the value of C. Yeah. I think in the last uh, question of the graded assignment, you can see that. Pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that is where I was like, uh, because it was similar to what Ma'am was also showing that it was differing in the second or third decimal. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Arya, what I. I just generated some samples in R around 1000, 10,000. I tried it out and it is not generating zero ever. Okay. Okay, okay sir. So, so that decimal difference is due to the our sample size only. It's not due to this factor. Okay. 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 Actually, uh, one other uh, related question I had in this particular case where we are proposing from a square and sampling a circle or a sphere right. it seems like we don't need to use c at all uh yeah c is just to get find the, the bounds bound. right like not find the bounds but uh, it's more about the efficiency of yeah efficiency of it, right right so uh, again that this is for the assignment only in the assignment it's okay if you don't use c right like explicitly the accept reject form of it uh, okay. which yeah. question you are referring to the last one <laughs> the third question in the graded assignment in week the three, code, right? the, yeah, week three. Okay. So there, if we don't explicitly use three in the function, it's okay. I have still sort of demonstrated that it matters and it's correct and everything. Mm -hmm. But in the AR example, especially if you're if you want to sample a circle, then it's not mandatory to use C. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah it's not mandatory to C, but yeah, in the last 
part of the last question you need to there is an expression the expression yeah. is gettable it's uh, and it it holds up in the sense that uh, even if you don't use c mm -hmm. the number of trials and you are asking for that in the question right uh, find yeah. the number of trials yeah. as p increases mm -hmm. that is identical more or less with c yeah it's the, yeah. Uh, if you if you get the value of c it's just to verify your answer that you are doing it correctly okay great yeah average number of loops will approximately should be equal to c if it's not coming out it means you might be going wrong somewhere in the code so it's better if you check the value of c but yeah there is no need to compute in this third question okay, okay yeah anything else Ah, this one is clear area, right? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. So can I ask? Yeah, sure. So can I ask a question from our week two? Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, a first type without I have in the. Uh, Calculation of cursor or a theoretical means, sir. Theoretical means, okay. Which question? So, in every question, I think uh, there was a uh, we have to calculate empirical mean and theoretical mean. Right, so, right. Uh, hmm. For calculating empirical mean, we just take a mean of the sample. But uh, I don't understand, uh, sometimes I don't get a theoretical mean. So, how to get? Yeah, so you just for theoretical mean, like if it's a known distribution, right? If it's binomial, you know that theoretical mean is n times p. And if it's some other random distribution, you just need to find the expected value of x for the given parameter values. It's just same as finding expected value of x. That is your theoretical mean, right? Yeah, but uh, I some somewhere I find. Uh, 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 integration from 0 to c x into fx this uh, formula to calculate a mean is it correct yeah that is correct b2 solution is released yeah you need to plug in the values in the last for a and c right that's all b2 question we are referring right if i'm not wrong yeah, yeah yeah so their expected value was coming out to be some a times c over a plus one uh, and, uh, sir, uh, in week two, uh, yeah, you gave gave question to calculate the value of C, but uh, I don't see where uh, in the week two lecture we uh, uh, the, in lecture so there was no uh, no way that how to calculate uh, calculate C. Okay, yeah. So in the lectures, you know the theoretical form, right? You know the algorithm theoretically. You know how it works, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just try to implement in R was your last question of week two. So if I show you how we did it, you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Right. So for C, what you do is you try to find your upper bound for this ratio fx over gx, right? And this, sir, also I don't uh, understand, sir. Uh, uh, here, fx is given, but uh, gx is not given. So, gx is your this right proposal distribution from uniform a comma b, and we know that PDF of uniform a comma b is one over b minus a. Okay, but uh, so everywhere gx will be given. No? Yeah, your proposal distribution is g of x, right? Here, sometimes yeah. we might give you in the PDF form, sometimes we we'll give you the distribution names. You just need to, like here, it's given, right? Uniform A, comma B. So it's distributed, it's PDF is known, right? It's 1 over B minus it. Just plug it in and proceed further. Okay. Also, okay. uh, I have to calculate a maximum value. Also. Yeah, you need to find the maximum value of X in the range 0 to 1, right? So that, that is the range for your target distribution. Anyway. And then you can write like you can generate a lot of values in between zero and one. Compute the values of C for all those values of X, and then find the maximum value of C. Uh, so what will be sir uh, value of uh, for question number one? Uh, 
it gets a bit difficult to work with google docs or something so i was thinking i'm shifting to latex but i don't have too much experience so to just um... okay i will share one demo file if you want to can explore it's on the overlay oh, yeah sir uh, i have a doubt yeah uh, sir uh, beta distribution so i uh, didn't understand in the week 3 uh, first uh, slide week 3 first first slide okay. and just below mam tech gx is equal to 1 so i didn't get why is it like gx is equal to 1 uh, okay which first slide only right beta distribution yeah accept accept reject method Example. Okay, this yeah. one, right? Yeah, this. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand this whole FX. What is it? Your FX is the PDF of beta with parameter four comma three. So you know the PDF for beta distribution? No, sir, I don't remember. Okay, so we uh, I can write it down maybe somewhere. Even if I will write it, yeah, yeah. Jai Dev has shared the link to the Wikipedia page of this. You can get it from there. Mm-hmm. Wikipedia pages for most distributions are very useful. In one single panel, you will find all of the useful yeah, parameters the and formulas yeah. and everything. Yeah. Okay, so. Here you see that so it's beta four comma three right? Yes. So your distribution would be let's say in general it's a comma b. So we have beta a comma b right? Then x raised to the power a minus one and then one minus x raised to the power b minus one. So here you see a value of a is four, value of b is three right? We have now beta four comma three. X raised to the power four minus one, one minus x raised to the power three minus one. Now you know how to solve betas and gammas symbols expression. How you know how to solve it? So in general, your beta a comma b like this expression you can solve by this is your gamma a times gamma b by gamma a plus b. So where your gamma a is nothing but a minus one factorial. Okay, so if I'm saying that here a is over four, right? So you can see that it was one over beta. So this thing comes in denominator over here, gamma four, gamma three, and their sum comes in numerator. Okay, so uh, gamma I, will, I will look for it. But uh, uh, why is the gx equal to one? Because it's uniform zero comma one, right? What's the PDF of in uniform? It's one over b minus a, so it's one. Whenever you are given your distribution uniform a comma b, its PDF would be one over b minus a. And uh, so uh, for calculating the value of c, we take f x y g x. Yeah. And we try to find the maximum value, no? Yeah, maximum value of that expression. Yeah, for right. all the values of x. So here uh, we take log, so that our expression will be more easier to calculate. Now differentiate, derivative will be easier to calculate. That's what. Yeah, 
yeah here ma'am has solved numerically so yeah you can take the log differentiated find the value of x for which this expression will be maximum right once you find the expression just plug this value back over here so this will give this will give c yeah this will give c okay but uh, suppose uh, uh, there is a exponential distribution uh, lambda e to power minus lambda like that okay so in that uh, for calculating x we will have uh, some lambda no x will be in term of lambda then what to do next Okay, so you are saying your target distribution or proposal distribution is exponential? A proposal distribution. Oh, so your GX would be you are saying some. Yeah, in the big three, there is. A... You are saying your GX three. is good. Okay, big three. Yes. Big, three. big three gamma distribution. Example three. Example. Three. No, which slide is it? Uh, I think the second slide. Second. Gamma distribution. Okay, so they are they are taking target distribution as. So we couldn't okay. uh, see. Target as gamma and proposal as exponential, right? So, yeah. So so here a proposal will be given or we uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, in the lecture, we think that uh, ma'am has assumed a proposal. So it is proposal will be assumed by ourselves or it will be given. Okay, so oh, in the lectures also, I think it has been explicitly mentioned what the proposal is. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, the way uh, see uh, mentioning it is just like uh, see assuming that this is the only the correct value of proposal. Okay, yeah. So for most of the questions, we might give you proposal, but for some, we might ask you also. So the condition for proposal is that its support should be equal to or greater than that of your target distribution. And support means uh, the value that is the value it takes. And uh, the and then you compute the C right by the computing that ratio. So lesser the value of C is, the more effective your algorithm would be so we want generally that proposal for, for which your value of c goes down okay so yeah also, here ma'am has taken randomly as exponential lambda but you can take any other distribution and try and compute c for that and see if you that proposal is better than this one so but uh, yes sir so please explain uh, uh, by taking uh, some effects and uh, how to uh, know which proposal will be good for this reference? Please, uh, can you explain briefly? Okay, so you know what? Uh, what is your support for gamma distribution? Uh, uh, alpha beta. What values it can take? What values your x can take? Any real number greater than zero. Okay. So for your gamma distribution, right? Your x can take all values from zero to infinity, right? So and we want to draw from gamma distribution, so that that is our target distribution. So now we need a proposal distribution. Suppose I take proposal as uniform 0, 1. In that case, my values of x are only in the range 0, 1, right? Which is, and this range is smaller than the range for target distribution, right? Because uh, if I draw it over number line so this is zero this is my support of gamma distribution is over this complete number line right but my support of proposal distribution is only till this point so i cannot take this uniform zero comma one as proposal because its support is smaller than that of target distribution 
I need that distribution which is either equal to this support of our distribution, the target distribution, or more than this. So if I take exponential, right? For exponential also, the support is zero to infinity, which is equal to the support of my target distribution. So I can take exponential as normal as your proposal distribution. You can also take uh, normal distribution also, right? For normal, you can take any value from minus infinity to infinity, right? This support is greater than that of gamma. So normal C will be greater. Variable. That you need to compute. That depends on which parameters you are taking. But all, right? So your normal, what is your mean of normal? What is variance? You need to compute what is lambda for exponential. So you can try out different parameter values for different distribution and see for which the C is minimum. Because minimum the C, it means minimum number of loops you have to go through to generate one sample. Yes, how to calculate sir, lambda? How to calculate lambda? Uh, that that is again right. You need to go for that value which minimizes your C. Okay, we have to again now. Uh, yeah, that is all written by kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it clear? Uh, sir, can, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Can, uh, sir, can you explain uh, briefly the the box Mueller transformation? Just uh, Sort the box transformation. Okay, which step you struggled in in box mirror? Or... Just uh, go through so. Okay, yeah. So, Box Miller we generally use to generate samples from standard normal distribution. Okay. Standard normal, I mean, mean is zero and variance is one. Okay. So, what Box Miller do is Box Miller generate your samples in pair. It won't generate single sample; it will generate two samples at a time. So, we initially assume that uh, you have two random variables x and y. So, you will be sampling from both of them like your box miller algorithm when you run will give you two samples from normal zero one so one would be corresponding to x distribution other would be y so your target distribution is nothing but a joint distribution of these random variables x and y and both are independent and both follow standard normal so their joint distribution would be given by this right so here uh why we are trying to generate uh, to accept uh, that, that is box mill because box mill returns you in the pairs only it won't generate a single that is the main motive of this so everywhere in the uh, in accept project we take uh, generate one value of x no? yeah but in box miller it's a already driven tra algorithms in this we generate two in this it outputs a pair of standard normal You can use only one if you want, but it will give you the two. Okay. Because it, uh, in, so the main motive of this is to convert into polar coordinates and then draw. Then we are converting this distribution to your polar form. And after converting to polar form, we have noticed that it is nothing but uh, your theta is kind of uniform 0 comma 2 pi and the other one is exponential this this would be 1 over 2 on the exponential 2 it was a typo right so we notice that your r square follows exponential 1 over 2 and theta follows uniform 0 comma 2 pi and we have the relation between r and theta we have driven it initially so these are the relations right so what we do is we draw uh, sample from R, we draw sample from theta and then we convert it back to X and Y. We generate from R, we generate from theta, we convert it back to X and Y. 
and this is the relation derived from the above part x square plus y square equals r square and tan theta equals to x over y over x it's quite tough no? uh, are you aware of polar coordinates like have you studied it yeah, yeah. in some courses yeah, yeah. then then it should be quite simple right it's nothing just some mathematics going on finding relations so what it has done is it shows that uh, you so you need not to generate you need no if you can't generate directly from standard normal right it is saying draw from the uniform if it is feasible and draw from exponential distribution if it is feasible then you can use your those two draws to generate from standard normal that is the main logic suppose you have a system right and uh, let's say you can't use the command r norm to generate random samples from normal normal distribution right okay. but it supports your r unif and r exponential or you can use any other earlier studied algorithm to generate from uniform and exponential right so you generate from these two and then you can transform it to get your standard normal sample that's the main algorithm if you can't generate directly from normal generate from exponential and uniform and then convert it back sir so, can you sir provide any extra resources like for this course course uh, okay so this course content is already a mixture of lot of reference materials so you can you can feel free to google it or if any one of you found some good material you can share it over discourse start some discussion over discourse and participate it right i think that's it in, in in lsm sir we didn't find a uh, any good uh, material for internet yeah in lsm professor siva was uh, following his own book and some one specific content page only right but here professor dutika has a lot of references materials she has taken some part from some and joined it all to make this good collection of notes for you all so a better way would be it for this for all of you would be to collaborate so that's what uh, i think they have started some post on discourse where you all can work on self evaluation assessment participate in coding part and all this someone of you can also start the reference material part share some discuss over it right so do participate in all those discussion we encourage you to do that because only then the things would be easier because you all are new to our this all algorithm like it is using some of the concept from your foundation level but some of you might not be able to recall some of you might be struggling with that so do collaborate do have healthy discussions over this course right Uh, sir, can you explain, sir, week three uh, assignment question number three? Oh, uh, week three. Yeah. So week before you move, can you explain this once? Uh, like I wanted to understand. Uh, mm -hmm. Here, after like we've done the process, so we've got an exponential and a uniform, right? Yeah. Will that always be uh, true for all distribution? Like because we are sampling from the normal distribution right so will like the conclusion that we'll get a unit like in the end this last uh, uh equation right this one will one yeah. by so will that always hold yeah it will always hold because it's it's for the standard normal only you can't use it for any general normal mu sigma square okay so it actually means that this will be the or two distribution from where we have to like uh, sample which we have to use yeah okay yeah okay and uh, one more thing can you okay after this question i'll ask after uh, yes sir okay. uh, can you go to practice assignment 3 first yes, question practice assignment 3 first question okay first question graded not graded okay This one, right? Yeah. Not no. This is uh, graded. I'll go to this one. Practice at first. Yeah. So here, actually, I was trying to find this your support f x by g x. Okay, but if you see the e to the power, it is actually the x square. So when I am deriving after taking log, 
it's coming as a quadratic equation okay and it is giving a little bit weird x value so is anyone try in the group it's coming a uh, uh, x is coming as a normal value or it's coming as a some different value Uh, okay uh when you have taken log of fx what will it become see yeah uh, if you see uh, if the exponential is nothing it is going to be just lambda e to the power e to the power minus lambda right so once you are going to take the e in above part it is going to become something like minus x square sorry lambda x minus x square divided by 2 sigma x square now when you are going to take the log okay so e to the power becomes a expression so x square is still remain yeah okay. now when we are deriving it one okay. x is coming in upper part and one x is coming in the down so when you uh, do a calculation it's something coming like uh, minus x square plus lambda x sigma x square plus sigma x square plus 0 so i done some quadratic and i get some x value i am not sure whether i done the correct or not but i try two three times i am getting the same thing Me... Anyone tried Jadev or Arya? Anyone? You haven't tried it no, yet. No, I haven't tried. I I haven't tried yet. Uh, also, sir, for getting a mean, mean for uh, this fx. Okay, if hmm. when you try to get the mean, the mean is also coming in very <laughs> different. for the target variable actually uh, that reminds me slightly deviating questions uh, all of these derivations are not required in the assignments right uh, which derivations you are referring to like if i want to find uh, the maximum value of something or optimum value of something i'll do the derivative of it set it to zero and then solve right right, right? so all of that is not required okay. it's okay if we just come up with the expression somewhere right yeah <clears throat> okay okay yeah so okay so what you did is you did your uh, fx right so this will be your let's say fx by right. g of x given lambda right <laughs> right when you take log it will become log of fx minus log of gx of lambda right right okay then what you did is you take the log of this expression right yeah so so it will be, it become like something log sigma x square then log x here yeah. and then it will come minus x square divided by 2 sigma x square and the uh, other side it will come just minus uh, uh, lambda x uh, for so my g x so it become plus lambda x actually okay, log lambda becomes okay and it will be yeah minus lambda x right so it will become plus this right Yeah. Now take the derivative. When you take the derivative, this log x is going to become one by x, right? Right. And the upper is going to become two x uh, by two sigma x square. You remove the two two, then it become x divided by six sigma, sigma x square. Correct. Uh, where are you getting sigma x square? Now when you sigma square. Right? Yeah, sorry, sigma sigma square. Correct, sigma, sigma square. Right. Yeah. And then you get this uh, lambda x, right? Let's now, see. when you uh, try to set the value zero, mm -hmm. so this x is going to be uh, when you going to solve the equation, this x is going to multiply with this x, right? So that we can take all the x out. But this x is going to joining with your lambda also, and that it's become like a quadratic equation like that. So yeah. You just try. That, just try. that's okay, no, uh, Mukesh. I, I mean, I I just arrived at the same expression. This is solvable. Yeah, it will be solvable. The, the the thing though is that you know you'll get two values for x. One of them is clearly invalid because it's not in the support of that distribution. So the other right, Jay, the, but uh, uh, I am getting the what? The, go on, sorry. What? If, no, it's it's not easy. By mathematically, you cannot solve just simply like that. It, you can solve it, but when you put this x value to try to find the c value, uh, when I am trying to put in the r oh, r, okay. r program. It's not matching with the correct me. Okay, okay. That's so why I'm getting them. Then let me do it through the end. Okay. 
Yes, sir. You, you, you also can try. I want to know where yeah, I can okay. start. Okay, okay, okay. So I think both of you are discussing. So yeah, let's uh, start a thread and discuss, and let's discuss it over here because if I tell the solution, then it won't be much brainstorming in this question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I. Nilan sir, could you look at Fat's uh, question in the chat box? Okay. Uh, we don't need to. Yeah, yeah. Like we haven't asked for any derivation yet in the assignment. For as sir, as well. even if the question is obtained, the expression we don't need to. Yeah, obtain the, the expression is you need to obtain the expression. There is no such derivation, right? Okay. Okay. Should we? Should we create assignment portion three? Like. Uh, this one, right? In week two, you had one question to generate, obtain the expression for C, right? Yeah. Well, in the third question, you can simply do it like this. Just this is the expression you need to maximize over this, over x for this expression. That's all you need to do. Okay. So we don't need to write the intermediate steps. You you can write this. Which intermediate steps you are referring? Like C is equal to max f x by g x is equal to max six x into one by one minus x. All of these steps. These are the steps I have written, right? You can see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we don't need to write them, right? Because that is just derivation. We, we you said you just said that we just need the final expression, right? To obtain the expression means you need to show how you are getting it. It's not any theoretical derivation we are asking. Just plug in f x g x and you get it. That's all. Nothing else to be done. Ah, okay, so we don't have to derive the do the derivative and then set it to zero and then solve that and therefore conclude that. Yeah, yeah. See that, that, that all that we don't have to do. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Obtain the expression means just obtain it. Uh, later on, we are asking you to find the value, then do it. But till for this, only because like uh, in the second part, for example, uh, because so for this question only second part. So mm -hmm. uh, you've taken a sequence and then you've tried to find the maximum value, but that can also be done by the derivative, right? So and yeah, but you we need will to get... write a function in R, right? Yeah. So, but that would be like 1.5 into b minus a, uh, because x would be maximized at half, right? So uh, are you sure it will be maximized over half? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Because because I I did the derivative and like I was matching the results as well, so. Uh, wait, let me check. I haven't looked at the final answers. Let me check. No, so my question is that even for that, like, I'm not able to draw the line between what you want us to write and what is acceptable to not be written because it's getting a bit confusing now. So. Okay, well, give me a minute. So this was my after bound. So you're saying x is coming out to be 1.5 in all of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we take the log and uh, differentiate with with respect to x. Okay, okay. Yeah, that might be possible. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Taking log and do it might. Yeah. But the value of c will change for every a and b. That's all. Because you are multiplying by factor of b minus a, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it would be 1.5 into b minus a if we right. put k is equal to half. So, but but the way we got so because like ma'am also takes log, then she uh, gets the value, and then she plugs it back in, right? So she does a lot of steps in between. So yeah. you just she want us to skip the week four, week four, right? Not week four, sir. Week two. Or even week three for that matter. Week three, I think. yeah. She did it in the week three. We asked this question in the week two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So if so, you're doing like that, do that. But uh, you need your function should work for the general parameters it takes in. Yeah, that that it it'll work. But uh, my question was like, do we need to show how we got one point five b minus a, or it's not even required? Just you can comment it, right? You can comment it. Right? It will max at half all this. Okay, I mean it, it's a bit okay. I think maybe for me it's better to write everything because it's getting a bit confusing because uh, it's not very clear what to write, what not to write. So actually, I got the same way, like the same expression as yours, and I put in the derivation there. 
so that's why i asked like is it required to put the derivations or yeah not? even even i spent quite some time writing special symbols yeah. and taking logs and everything in the, in the doc and so because that is quite some work and if we can avoid it i would prefer to avoid it but not at the cost of losing marks over it so no, no. so here you in the first part you need to obtain only the expression right in objects and this expression there is no such nothing like this right you need to plug in fs and gx and you right? yeah this expression is fine but even even here like uh, yeah this is fine but for the second part like we need to take the log then differentiate and then we need that to then sec take the second do, right? derivative as well right so that you need to, to do right you can write a function we have asked you to write a function to generate the value of r right we have asked nothing to draw derive analytically or something you just need to write a function no so okay okay so uh, when there are questions like uh, does the theoretical me mean match the this thing mm -hmm. uh, the empirical mean yeah. but but that is like a, a, a pd a pmf uh, sorry a pdf is given so uh, so we need to integrate it multiply it by x and then we get the expectation right so do we not need to show all of that just to obtain what the theoretical mean is or we just directly yeah, for, just uh, for theoretical mean you have to show but for empirical you just need to type mean of samples and you get it right I'm yeah so mm -hmm. yeah so basically we need to derive the uh, theoretical mean and then we plug in the values and show that this is equal to this right 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 mm -hmm. okay yeah so i mean so basically we need to derive the, even for this so so that is my that that is why for the second part also i derived uh, the optimal value of k which you've taken because if you look at the notes ma'am had also done it in the similar way so that's why i went ahead and did that so Okay. Okay. So yeah, it was taught in week three, but by week two, we were expecting you to come up with your own way before looking at this. So here we are expecting you to write a function only, right? So we are only gonna copy paste your function. It should work well. That's all. It should be. Nothing yeah. Okay. Else okay. Is required. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can so, take any value. Uh, for like non uh, for the distributions that are not well known. I think mm -hmm. that will still be tedious. We can do the integration on paper and figure out what the theoretical mean is. Uh, but as long as that uh, derivation and the steps are not required, it will be great. No, yeah, I'm not saying that we need it completely. Right? Just show at, at least show one or two steps. N nothing more than that. Just show even a single step would work. Nothing more. We are not. Well, we don't expect you to write one page of derivation and then do it. Just one or so two we, steps, not more than that. Okay. So we can uh, write by hand, uh, take picture, and then paste the picture. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end, it should be a PDF file only, so you can do it uh, any way you want. Okay. Uh, uh, so can you go Aditya, do you want to go ahead, or should I ask something? Question three is just explanation. Question three, okay. Sample from the truncated. You need to sample from the truncated standard normal. That's all right. Okay, I think week three deadline is tomorrow, right? So, yes. Uh, next week, sir. So this, so this function of fx is. It is a PDF of truncated standard model. Yes. So, okay, I have to search for it now. Okay, I will search. Just do that. The purpose of this assignment is to explore. Okay, I will take beta function. Okay. So, in general, this truncated normal distribution means that you have fixed the range of values it can take. So, in general, your standard normal distribution takes value from minus infinity to infinity, right? Yeah. Here we have fixed it, it can take values only from minus A to A. Okay, okay, sir. I will look for it. Uh, sir, uh, I have one question. Uh, the format uh, for examination will be same as L. Uh, most probably it will be objective. 
we will confirm it as soon as it gets we get confirmation from the prof we will confirm it to you also yes to this hello yeah yeah i'm audible yeah so um, i just had three uh, operational queries um, you have already assigned uh, already answered the first one so you will release the assignment solutions for week 1 and week 2 after this session right yeah okay uh, also uh, can you let us know by when uh, maybe an approximate date by, by when the evaluations will be done for the assignments evaluation might take some time might take some time we will let you know. okay but uh, okay fine but whatever it is it will be based on the solutions that you have already released is that, is that correct yeah, yeah. okay and uh, remember, last thing. Uh, sorry uh, that reminds us just uh, sorry for the interruption uh, pito uh, whenever you finish those can you please uh, just take one sample submission and walk us through it and like basically do a live grading or something you can you know mask out uh, the names and everything that will be very useful yeah that that is yeah. a very good suggestion hey even name is also name it also okay yeah that's a good suggestion i mean as look it depends on whose name it is but yeah okay 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 you can do it but doesn't matter you take our name also no issue <laughs> okay one sample we will do uh, sir uh, my question was about the uh, examination so it will be same as lsm Yeah, uh, Aditya, it was uh, answered last week as well. There will be uh, mostly MCQ for the first quiz, and later on it it will change to pen and paper. Maybe for quiz two or interim. Yeah, so quiz two and interim would be like we had for LSM. Quiz one we might have objective. So, but uh, we are not uh, preparing for objective now. We are so yeah. That's what I also mentioned last week. So whatever outputs you are getting, you are making inference on it. You are observing your plots, right? So your question would be based only on that. So like in LSM, more is in quiz two and LSM we had the R outputs given as the input. Yeah. Those questions, such type of question is subject to more than this. Then the next one. Okay, and yeah. sir, I have uh, I have a question about the uh, live session. Uh, so so next live session will be on uh, Saturday. On Friday, Friday eight to ten. Yeah. So yesterday live session we had to postpone it to last moment. I'm sorry, I couldn't inform it a bit earlier. Due to some emergency, we need to. Okay, sir, no problem. So eight to ten is yes, eight to ten is fine. Yeah, eight to ten it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Um. Uh, so I just had one last question remaining. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the graded assignments for this course uh, will we have similar graded assignments throughout the duration? I mean, uh, will it all be programming based, where we have to do R code and submit that code, and will that be it, or can we expect to have some MCQ based uh, graded assignments as well? Uh, no, it will be the same. Okay, so for now, okay, I don't know how many of you are aware of the course. So after week four, your sampling portion ends, right? And okay. And after I think from week five or six onwards, I think I I hope you all have completed MLT also, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So after week five six, you will see MLT parts coming in linear regression, range regression, lasso, EM algorithm coming into play. Okay. 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 So the kind of assignments you had in MLT programming assignment, similar programming assignments in R, we will have for those algorithms. So, uh, if all the assignments are planned to be programming based, if you have to do R code and submit it, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to do away with the zip file submissions and have them auto graded on the portal itself, like like it is done similarly for other programming uh, programming assignments, say for uh, Java or PDSA? Yeah, those are the see those courses are running from a long time, right? We had a portal visibility for those languages. Right. R is yeah. kind of new, so we are. Kind of configuring it, it will take some time, but yeah, we will release it soon. Okay, so it, that that is that is in the pipeline, right? Having yeah. uh, R run on the portal. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah that is in the pipeline. Okay. Yeah, because uh, these uh, zip file assignments are taking like uh, compared to compared to other assignments, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. To make the report and mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. So the R programming started only from last. Yeah, it's taking time for the zip, but it's safe actually. You know, <laughs> it is really safe compared to our Java terminal. You know. You forget oh, okay. to pick your okay. one. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So testing phase is so, going on. Sometimes you submit whatever you submit, it will never. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we are testing so that no such troubles are caused to you. So yeah. it's in testing phase. We will release it. Yeah. We are on testing phase currently. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir, I had some queries from uh, graded assignment. So can we discuss that now? Yeah, which ones? Uh, okay, uh, Arya, I'm, I'm, uh, Arya, very sorry. Just one small question. I'll, I need to drop off after some time. Uh, yeah, yeah, even I'm I... trying to drop off actually. But... Okay, okay, no, never mind. Yeah, you, you continue. I'll ask it in the chat box. Maybe so I can answer it later. Yeah, so uh, sir, graded assignment, like, uh, can you just open that PDF? So some uh, some places we have to generate exponential distribution, right? So uh, is it OK if we uh, so if is it OK if we use uh, RXP and um, DXP and all those things? Or do we have to use inverse transform everywhere? Because like for the first question. Yeah, yeah. here you can use the RXP. OK. And for the second one, basically, we have to use the inverse transform, right? Because that is what ma'am has written in the this thing. For second one, this is, I think, box Muller transformation, right? Yeah. 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 So we, we, we have to use our uh, inverse transform, right? Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. OK. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I think I'll have to drop off. So thank you. So, yeah. Right. Sir. Yeah. Sir, in this question, uh, do we have to like uh, plot the density in the three in a three D graph or? Uh... Oh, go for basic two D plots. Yeah. Okay. The more you go into three D, the visualization kind of blurs out. Is there a plotting involved in this question anywhere? I completely forgot. Uh, I think yeah, we need the to plot, plot the density, density for the obtained oh, density. Energy. Okay, fine. Huh. Sorry, I thought you were talking about plotting the obtain distribute okay uh, yes Preetam, Preetam, I think. yeah so uh, so the solutions that you are sharing for the graded assignments yeah uh, will we get the entire r script with it or will it be similar to the report with questions and answers in test it similar like report. you can copy paste it in r it is easily copied it can easily be copied and pasted okay okay but uh, all the code that is required that will be there in the solution itself right yeah yeah Okay, all right. Yeah, that, that was my last question. Thank you, sir. Thanks yeah, for the help. Okay. Anyone, anything else? So, oh, sir, uh, on uh, next week will be a uh, deadline for both the assignments, no? Uh, your voice is. Very week four deadline. Time. Week four deadline is on seventh July, and week three deadline is on second July. So there's a five day difference between the two. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, you are getting more than a week for every assignment. Yeah. The, for for some reason, this like this time it's slightly odd. We are getting more than one week for week three. Yeah. So that is that is new. For some subjects only. Oh, sorry, Parth, I was hoping nobody would actually mention that and jinx it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I noticed it. I noticed. I noticed it a couple of hours ago, actually, with the PSOSM reminder mail that came in. Oh, no problem, sir. After week four, is it only just ML uh, for the entire course? Uh, sorry, after week four, is it only just machine learning for the entire course? Like, not only machine learning, yeah, some optimization problem and machine learning stuff will come in. You can go through it, the course content on the online degree, BS online degree page, right? The yeah. course description is given. I thought you might have seen it. Okay, so to be in week five, you will see some uh, Monte Carlo sampling, right? And some optimal importance for sampling. After that, week six onwards, you will have MLE linear regression, likelihood functions coming in. In week seven, you will have rich regression and rich penalty visualization, MLEs which don't have closed forms coming into play, Taylor series, and all that stuff will go on. Okay. Thank you. So more, 
many of the things you might have covered in MLT is what I'm expected from the books. But it won't be the same. It would be in a different perspective going in. Anyone, anything else? No, sir. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.